so what is life without family and friends? You know, yeah, we have our ups and downs with our family. We have our ups and downs with our friends. We get mad at each other. We get our feelings hurt. They say things that we may not want to hear or just aren't ready to hear, perhaps. Depending on what it is and what it's about. If you're lucky to find one good friend, I mean a friend that's like family, that does right by you, and, you know, doesn't try to use you or take you or play you for a fool, you're pretty lucky. You know, I have a pretty broad network of friends and colleagues and associates, but there's a big difference between what defines a friend or somebody that I would consider a friend to close enough to say, hey, you're like family, you know? Um, yes, I resume smoking. Sorry, folks. Uh, still going around with the vape device. It's kind of a back and forth thing. It's a love-hate dynamic. Um, but my family's almost gone. I have, uh, I came from a family, six, six siblings, should have been nine. And there's only, I only have one brother and one sister left standing. So, um, and I don't have any close friends. The close friends that I thought I had were, were not. Uh, I don't know if it, or let me retract and say maybe they were for a time, depending on what we were going through in life, but as time went by, I guess, people outgrow each other. They outgrow relationships, you know. Hence the reason for divorce. Infidelity, whatever, you know, but I'm grateful because I'd rather live in truth and heartache than be in a lie, having smoke blown up my ass, I guess, pardon my language, and only to find out, wow, you know, I've been played or whatever. No, you know, um, I've made my mistakes in life, we all do, you know, but I can't say anyone deserves that, and I don't wish that on nobody, you know, even to the people that I have, that I no longer have contact with, or, or whatever, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I hope they're, they're doing well and this and that. Um, just doesn't mean that they necessarily belong in my life. Or that they'd want me in their life, perhaps. I don't know. You know, but... Um, I'm just contemplating, you know. It's... Um, COVID-19 has had a profound effect on a lot of people, relationships, couples, the dynamic. Some people got married during the COVID-19 while others ended up separating. And I mean, it either brought people closer or it came between them. Now you can't blame the COVID alone because you know, there's probably underlying circumstances that would result in a separation because if it just takes a pandemic, you would think a pandemic would bring people closer out of fear of losing them. That's what I would think. Anyway, but what I would think and what another person thinks may be two different things. Maybe multiple things, I don't know. But I just know that Because of the COVID-19, you know, when you're in close proximity of somebody all the time, it can do a number of things to you, and it's not always a healthy thing, you know. Uh, 
especially if you're both not working because of the COVID, because your place of employment closed down, or, you know, I, I, I mean, every business, everybody got affected by that. So, you know, I'm one of those people that I needed to retreat. I needed a reprieve, and I said, you know what? I need my own space. Nothing personal, you know, but I, I need to just have time for myself. And it was something personal, but it's not stuff that I'm going to go into here. Uh, there were many things going on that led up to that, and but it's neither here nor there, I guess. Now it's academic, it's past tense. Done, over. I'm open, you know, to looking at, reconciling at a later point, you know, somewhere down the road, but I expect to see there's just certain things that I absolutely expect that I will never settle for again in any relationship. Um, some of this has been about taking stock in myself. I have always sold myself short, always, and that's on me, that's not nobody else's fault, but, and even to a kind-hearted person, somebody who sells herself short, a kind-hearted person can be, can take that for granted. Not necessarily be considered quote-unquote abusive, but take that for granted and just assume, hey, you know, whatever. Um, I got him or her right where I want him or her, you know. Um, so you don't have to be an evil person to be guilty of taking someone for granted because we've all done it unintentionally or intentionally or whatever for whatever reason. We've done it to family, we've done it to friends, we've done it to our significant other, we've done it to our children if you're parents children have done to parents, siblings, the list goes on. So, I just know that through everything that that has happened, I'm like, all right, you know, these are my boundaries. Um, and it goes like this, you will respect me as a woman because I gotta respect myself as a woman, and I do. I'm not going to, I'm just not out for somebody to, to treat me any kind of way because that's what they think is funny or a joke or, oh, let me show you how wrapped I have around my finger. I'm not into any abuse from physical to gaslighting to any of that BS because that's all it is, is BS, it's manipulative. You know, and I'm not going to take blame for things that aren't my fault. I will not raise other people's children. Been there, done that. You know, laid out money and this and that. And no, I won't do that again. Uh, I've got money. So, you know, if I marry, there will be a prenuptial agreement. If, the ha if I buy a house and it's only in my name, I'm not putting somebody else's name on the deed. It will be in my name, which means it's my domain. I'm not going to be the one leaving, moving out on a relationship because things gone bad. If you want to pay half for the house, you know, if you're my partner and you want to pay half, you know, co-sign this and that, then yeah, of course. Your name goes on the deed, you know. But if it's well, okay, she got more money than she has more money than me. I'm gonna ride her coattails and move my my grown children in, and we're just gonna have a hunk of door party. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. It's about, you know. I mean, I'm 50 years old. It is about. It's about me. 
or me and us, whomever that is meant to be in my life, me and my significant other, family, friends, they all have their place in my life. But I am not going to be the, the one to be milk dry by a guy with potentially grown children from a bitter divorce, you know, and who has contact with an ex-wife that he claims is this way and that way only to triangulate something. You know, and no, 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 no. I, I don't have time for it. It's all drama, it's manipulative, and it's bullshit. It's, it's, it's games, you know. And I'm saying, I'm putting this out there to make a point because I know I'm not the only person, ma female or male, male or female, to have gone through that. Hear all these horror stories about some of these acts and then the person's in touch with the ex and, you know, uh, no. No. So, you got to be careful. There's a lot of predators out there. There's a lot of takers out there. There's a lot of givers out there. The people that give are cautious and they have a right to be because of all the takers. I'm a giver. Not really a taker. I was a taker when I was doing drugs. And that was 20 years ago. I grew up since then. But my heart is wise and so is my mind. And I just know from experience, it's like, all right, I've been through this stuff enough with dysfunction. It is time to be functional and harmonious. And if that's not meant to be with who, whatever potential mate it is, then baby deep six it don't waste your time because all you're going to do is end up in a road of heartache and depression and all this stuff that's not even worth your damn time you know i'm speaking from personal experience so you know and if you're watching this and you know you know me and saying yeah whatever all i can say to you is that oh, you don't know unless you've been in my life and if you've been in my life then you know what i've been through if you've been consistently in my life, you know what I've been through. If you haven't, you haven't a clue. You know, people go through go through things every day. A, you know, something catastrophic can happen in the blink of an eye, and your life can change. You can lose everything just like that. So, you know, um, and I, I'm sorry, you know, to come across a little brace of I've just I've had a really interesting day, and I felt compelled to do this to make a point about boundaries, what I mean by boundaries and things like that. It's not about letting anybody use you. It's not about letting anybody disrespect you, demean you, belittle you, make you feel like all you're good for is sex or all you're good for is money or all you're good for is keeping house or all you're, you know, good for is X, Y, and Z. No, what you should be good for is the heart you have inside of you. And if that doesn't stand, that doesn't hold merit in itself, flip the middle finger, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm just keeping it real. Just keeping it real.